Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing seven things you ought to know when it comes to caring for your philodendron burl marks. This is mine right here. This guy is large and in charge. Definitely one of my favorites. Now, I definitely have a thing for philodendron. The burl marks is really unique with these beautiful, large arrowhead leaves, this beautiful verdant green. Absolutely love it. Now, I'm going to be explaining the ideal setup and the critical or crucial care tips that you ought to know. So in total, it's going to be seven things that you ought to know when it comes to caring for your philodendron burl marks. So I want to give you just some sort of idea on how Absolutely large and stunning, this beautiful philodendron burl marks is. Now mine is about six feet tall and growing. Uh, it just continues to grow. So I think I've kind of got some of it figured out when it comes to setup and critical or crucial care tips for uh, this plant. And that's what we're going to dive into this video. But just take a look at this beauty. It is absolutely stunning. Love it, love it, love it. Let's jump right into it. Thanks for checking out this video. I'm Tyler. If you like what you're seeing or you find this video to be useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or better yet, you can hit that subscribe button. Now to really show me some love, click on the bell for alerts and notifications for future content. Oh yeah, don't forget to check out my merch store, tylermossop.com. Now the first three things you ought to know when it comes to caring for your philodendron burl marks are all setup related. Once you have the setup down pat, that's when you can kind of focus on the crucial care tips. So when it comes to setup, the first thing is stake your philodendron. Burl marks is no exception. You gotta stake it. Now I've used a about a six or seven foot cedar uh, stake and I love to use the Velcro tape to attach uh, my philodendron, particularly to the stake. You could, you could go ahead and use a moss pole as well. Um, you know, there's different pros and cons to either or, but I've used a cedar stake and tend to use those um, as time has gone on with my houseplants. Um, it just works for me. Now, once you have it staked up, you wanna make sure that you are using a really good container. That means something, a container that has drainage holes in the base, maybe even a built-in saucer, which is the case for me. If you can go ahead and use a terracotta pot, um, if it's glazed on the outside, but kind of left natural on the inside, that's great because that saran or that terracotta, I should say, is really gonna help absorb any excess moisture and just kind of help keep things balanced when it comes to the watering. Now, you have your steak, you have your container. The third thing when it comes to setup is getting the soil composition correct or done correctly. And I'm going to grab the soil mix that I would use so I can share the ratios and the ingredients with you right now. So guys, sadly, I won't be repotting my burl marks today in this video. Uh, I probably won't need to repot it maybe until next spring or maybe even the spring after that. But if I were to be repotting it or if I was bringing it home for the first time from the nursery, it's these ingredients right here that I would highly recommend and that you use uh, when it comes to potting up or repotting up your uh, philodendron burl marks. So let's jump into what I have in front of me here. I have about three parts pine bark, uh, any kind of orchid mix, chunky bark orchid mix will work. So three parts of that to about one part uh, peat moss, one part perlite, one part horticultural charcoal, and one part of this sort of gritty stone. Now these ingredients, I don't always have all of them, um, but now that I do, this is kind of like the ultimate kind of mix, especially when it comes to caring for philodendron, aeroids, uh, and the like. So uh, definitely, you know, give making up or mixing up your own soil a try. 
Uh, you know, it's definitely something I get a lot of questions about or something uh, when folks, their plants aren't going so well. The first thing I ask is what is the soil mix? If you can get these, your hands on these ingredients to, uh, you know, really get your burl marks or your philodendron to thrive and flourish, this will make all the difference. Now, I forgot to mention, if you are going to be repotting your philodendron or your burl marks, it's a good idea to do that, or the best time of year to do that is the spring. So now that we've covered setup, you have your stake, you've got the right soil in the right kind of container, you're setting yourself up for success here so that your uh, burl marks is really gonna thrive and flourish. Now it's time to really kind of concentrate on the final sort of four things you ought to know, and this is in and around uh, watering, lighting, um, fertilization and humidity. And now if you can get these four things right on top of the setup, you are going to enjoy this beautiful plant. Yours is gonna grow and be just as big as mine after a couple of years. So let's jump right into it. When it comes to lighting, you wanna ensure that your bur burl marks, excuse me, is getting really good bright indirect light or even dapple light. So what does that mean? For me, I have these, this guy, close to some south facing windows which is really intense if it's right beside the window, but to make it less direct light and more bright indirect light, what you wanna do is move your plants, your house plants back about six to eight feet from the window. And that kind of, what that means is it's actually bright indirect light. It's no longer considered direct sunlight. If you can give it hits of morning sunlight, uh, maybe you have an east facing window. So it's uh, morning sunlight is considered less harsh than afternoon sunlight, then your burl marks will love you for that. So really that's kind of the ideal lighting setup for these plants. Now, once you have it in the right spot, you're gonna want to water your burrow mocks and what you can do is use the finger test. You can put your fingers in the top soil about the first inch or two of the plant. And when you do that and the soil and the mix that you've used is dry to the touch, that means, and that is the indication to water this plant. Now, if you dig your fingers a little bit deeper uh, beyond that inch or two, it should always feel slightly moist. If it, you know, you're putting your fingers in there and it's dry pretty deep, that means you should be watering it a little bit more frequently and maybe even up the quantity of water. But I think that test is a great idea uh, for people who may be novice or new to houseplants to really get the cadence, an idea of the cadence in which you should be watering your plants. So great tip uh, for watering. Um, if you wanna leave your water out for a day or two, depending on what kind of watering system you're on or whatever the case may be, May be that may help just sort of alleviate any kind of weird um, chlorine or whatnot may be able to evaporate off of that water that's always a good idea extra little tip there but yeah when you're watering these plants remember it's a function of the amount of light and what does that mean or what do I mean by that and that is uh, in the spring and summer it's probably going to be getting more light just uh, you know it's brighter and sunnier in the spring and summer so you know, you might wanna up your frequency or do that sort of finger test a little bit more often and then pull back on the frequency and quantity of watering in the fall and winter. I live in the Northeast, so it's unfortunately a little bit gloomier during that period and therefore my houseplants need less water. But once you're able to kind of figure out that lighting and watering, make sure you're providing your burrow marks with a lot of humidity. The more, the merrier you can get a hygrometer that's the little sort of digital tool that will read out the amount of humidity in your space um, 60% is kind of like the dream <laughs> it's kind of hard especially uh, in the winter months for me to keep the humidity level just that high it's in reality probably closer to 40 45% um, if I'm lucky, but the more sort of humidity, uh, you know, maybe moving your plants around, keeping this beside a humidifier can really make a difference in terms of how happy your burl marks tends to be. And uh, you know, the more consistent you can be with humidity, then the better. This guy is pretty happy. It's growing like crazy, like I said, about six feet tall. 
Now, uh, once you kind of have figured all of those things out, the last thing that is really, really important, especially when it comes to philodendron and the burl marks, isn't any exception, is uh, fertilizing. It's really important to, to fertilize your um, philodendron and your burl marks. So pick up some liquid fertilizer. 20, 20, 20 could be the way to go. You're gonna want to dilute that to with about you know, 50% fertilizer, 50% water. That's gonna give you a really good diluted, well-balanced fertilizer. And you're gonna go ahead and do that throughout the course of the spring and summer, about every other week. Just give it a little bit and you'll notice uh, it will be that much happier um, and we'll put out some great leaves and it will just, you know, flourish. Uh, over the course of time. One of the really unique characteristics about this plant is uh, just how crazy the leaves are, the arrowhead leaves, and the sort of main stems are very twisty, curvy. I'm gonna give you guys some close up uh, look at this plant and just how sort of wacky and wonky it can be, but I absolutely love this. This is one of my favorites. If you don't know, it's been named after, I believe this like architect from South America, he loved them as well and used them um, throughout his work, even though he focused on homes, but I guess he kind of landscaped, or I think he was a landscape architect, don't quote me on that. But um, yeah, Burl Marks is really special. If you're able to see one at your local nursery, I highly recommend it. Um, you won't be disappointed. Well, that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely leave a comment down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Miss you guys until the next one.